When it comes to construction, some projects are simply more dangerous and disaster prone than others. From safety concerns for local residents to probable natural disasters and environmental concerns, these four construction projects have been named the most disaster prone on the planet. Number 4. Victoria Square Towers, United Kingdom Located in Woking, Surrey, the Victoria Square Tower is a residential skyscraper complex that is currently being constructed. It includes three giant buildings aptly named Tower 1, Tower 2 and Tower 3. Each of the towers is exceptionally high. Tower 1 is 34 stories and reaches 384 feet. Tower 2 is 32 stories at 344 feet and Tower 3 is 23 stories and is 308 feet tall. With these giant buildings, Woking is the smallest town in the United Kingdom with one, let alone three, skyscrapers. As Woking is home to only 75,000 residents. Essentially, the plan was to construct the three buildings at the site of the Export House and Circle 7 office building, and each new skyscraper would offer residential housing for local residents, as well as a Hilton Hotel in Tower 3. What's especially interesting about this project is that it wasn't funded by private investors or overseas companies. Instead, it's been fully funded by Surrey's local council. They believe that as Woking sits directly on the train line to London, these residential towers could improve the infrastructure and economy of their small town by offering young professionals who work in the capital a place to live. However, as with many construction projects, things did not go according to plan. The first issue arose shortly after construction began in 2017, when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the UK. Construction all but stopped for several months due to pandemic regulations. However, they were able to get back to work and assumed that would be the end of the delays. But in 2021, Storm Aurori hit Woking, Surrey, with fury, and three cladding panels blew away in the storm. Although no one was hurt, it was incredibly dangerous, and the local government forced the project to shut down until February 2022, until additional reinforcements could be added. The fact that the panels which were meant to be completely adhered flew straight off during the first rainstorm, which is quite common in England, was certainly cause for concern for local residents of Woking. The Victoria Square Towers have been called Woking's biggest asset and liability, and while it's partially due to its expensive price tag, after the buildings all but fell apart in the storm, most people don't believe they're as safe as they need to be. Number 3. Pasig River Expressway, Philippines In the heart of the capital city of Manila in the Philippines, a 12-mile, 6-lane elevated expressway that will traverse the entire Pasig River is under construction. The project, known as the Pasig River Expressway, officially broke ground on September 24, 2021, several years after it was initially proposed. However, they have yet to start the construction of the highway itself, as the project still hasn't received its Environmental Compliance Certificate ECC. The proposed expressway will start at Radial Road 10 and end at the Southeast Metro in Manila. The idea is to provide an alternative and faster link to Metro Manila's largest building districts, minimize traffic congestion, and generally improve the lives and commutes of Manila's residents. But while many argue that the expressway will greatly benefit residents of Manila, others argue that the dangers it poses make the giant highway a huge problem instead of a price. In July 2021, just before they officially broke ground on the expressway, transport and environmental advocates spoke out publicly against the project claiming that the megastructure made almost entirely of concrete would negatively affect the Pasig River. It is meant to traverse. These advocates state that the expressway will diminish the river's ability to control natural flooding, as well as add to the ever-intensifying urban island heat effect that Manila already struggles with. There were also concerns that the Pasig River Expressway would create excessive noise and air pollution for local residents. Both while being built and after construction was completed, road dust, microplastics from car tires, and exhaust emissions are also on their minds. In fact, some say that while the Manila government claims the expressway will alleviate traffic, it will actually create more congestion by attracting vehicle use instead of public transport. Of course, in order to construct such a large project, the San Miguel Corporation, which is managing the Pasig River Expressway, was required to submit an environmental impact and assessment plan. And while many were hoping that this document would force SMC to ensure they were doing everything they could to protect the river and local environment, it came to light that entire sections of their report were plagiarized from another assessment. This solidified environmentalists' fears 
that SMC was not taking the project's effects on the surroundings seriously. Many people, including SMC CEO Raymond Ang, were arguing that the project will actually clean up the Pasig River and that the plagiarized environmental assessment was a simple mistake that should be rectified and approved immediately. But luckily, those who fought vehemently against the project have ensured that SMC will need a new and perfected application in order to receive the environmental compliance certificate. As of December 2023, they are still waiting for that certificate to start building. But with hundreds of thousands of environmentalists within the Philippines and around the world fighting against the expressway's dangers, it actually may never be built. Number 2. Rugyong Hotel, North Korea In the North Korean capital of Pyongyang sits one of the largest and most disaster-prone buildings on Earth. Known most commonly as the Rugyong Hotel, this building has been under construction since 1987 and still isn't completed. Its long and complicated story is filled with financial troubles, rusting metal and apparently crooked elevator shafts. When building began in 1987, Ryongyong Hotel was meant to be the tallest hotel in the world at 1,080 feet tall, though now there are several which are taller. The eye-catching design consists of three wings that are each 330 feet long and 59 feet wide, which converge to form a giant point. North Korea more recently explained that the building won't just be a hotel, but it will have anywhere between 3,000 and 8,000 guest rooms. It will also be home to offices and several restaurants, some of which will sit on the six rotating stories toward the top of the structure. However, construction was completely halted in 1992, after the fall of the Soviet Union caused a complete economic crisis in North Korea. At the time, the Ryungyong was set to cost a whopping $750 million, which was 2% of the country's entire GDP. Therefore, the hotel sat unfinished as a giant and quite ugly concrete shell for more than a decade, until North Korea was able to get back on its feet. During this time, it's been said that the European Chamber of Commerce in Korea inspected the concrete shell of a building and came back with very concerning information. First, they said that the concrete used was of a very poor quality, and they also noted that the elevator shafts were crooked. At the same time, residents of Pyongyang started to notice that the pinnacle cone built at the top of the building was rusting, and the Chamber of Commerce noted that the cone was irreparable. However, even with all of these issues, in April 2008, construction finally resumed, headed by the Orascom Group from Egypt. According to sources, North Korea had agreed to pay Orascom $400 million for a telecommunications project and not for the mega hotel, though Orascom started working on the partially built building immediately after the deal was signed. North Korea announced at the time that the incredible building would be completed by 2012, but that never happened. In 2012, they said it would actually open in 2013, but that didn't happen either. In fact, today, in December 2023, the Ryongyong still isn't open or even completely finished. Some say that it's because North Korea once again ran out of money, but others say that the would-be hotel is simply too dangerous to actually use. Number 1. Millennium Tower, San Francisco, USA At 58 stories high, the Millennium Tower in San Francisco, California is a 645-foot tall condominium skyscraper. It is the tallest residential and the sixth tallest building in San Francisco. The Millennium Tower was technically successfully constructed and completed by April 2009. This impressive structure has made the list of most disaster-prone construction projects for what happened after it was built. The Millennium Tower, proposed in 2002, was set to house hundreds of San Francisco residents in both standard homes and on the top floors, luxury apartments. And even though there were a few hiccups along the way, everything went more or less according to plan during design, approval and construction. It took four years to build after they broke ground in 2005, and it only cost $350 million, a small amount compared to the other most problematic construction projects. In fact, the building generated $750 million in the end, so it certainly turned a tidy profit. The problem with the Millennium Tower didn't appear until 2015, when its developer told the local San Fran authorities that the building was sinking and therefore tilting. By 2016, the Treadwell and Rollo Geotechnical Group's design was made public, and it was clear that the foundation of the main tower, a concrete slab built on concrete friction piles, was slowly sinking as the dense sand around it, known as Colmer sand, 
was shifting under the weight. While there are several other buildings on Mission Street, the others opted to build directly onto the bedrock 200 feet below instead of building 60 to 90 feet deep, as the designers for the Millennium Tower did. They quickly realized that, as of 2016, the tower had sunk 16 inches and had a 2-inch tilt at the bottom. By 2018, it had sunk a total of 18 inches and was leaning a terrifying 14 inches towards the northwest. As of 2022, the Millennium Tower is tilting an almost unbelievable 28 inches. In addition to the sinking skyscraper, residents have also reported creaking and popping sounds, as well as cracked windows and even panes of glass falling off the side of the building during a storm. Today, there are still hundreds of people living in the Millennium Tower, even though they are fully aware that it's sinking, because the San Francisco Department of Building Inspection has deemed the skyscraper safe to live in. It seems most residents will continue to do so so until they are forced to leave. That being said, there are a wide range of legal battles happening behind the scenes. The city of San Francisco filed a suit against Development Mission Street Developers LLC for the grave error, and various tenants within the Homeowners Association have filed a suit against Millennium Partners, the owner of the tower. What will happen next is anyone's guess, but it's likely that these companies will have to pay some serious fines for their mistakes and the residents of Millennium Tower certainly won't be able to live there forever. Each of these four construction projects has had different variations of disasters. For some, it's an issue of environmental safety. For others, like the Rungyong Hotel, the building itself was built so poorly that no one can use it. Some of the dangers have been fixed, while others loom, such as the ever-sinking Millennium Tower. But they are certainly all prone to disaster. Excited for more construction wonders? Click the video on your screen to unravel Ireland's $10.5 billion Metro Link. See you there.